Hello everybody, and welcome back. Today is going to be the first video on an actual plant species instead of a terms and definitions video. So, I wanted it to be memorable, and I have chosen a plant that I think is definitely memorable. The plant we will talk about today is the Gimpy. Uh, Gimpy which is a stinging nettle relative native to Australia. The scientific name for this plant is Dendronite. Dendronite. Uh, Moroides. So. Moroides. Now. This uh, scientific name can be uh, diverted in, or broken down into three separate parts. The uh, dendro part indicates that it's a tree. Nighty part, uh, that comes from the Greek word for nettle. And the moroides part, uh, that comes from the Latin term for mulberry. And it is similar to how humanoid indicates that something looks like a human. So, this uh, scientific name roughly translates into uh, the mulberry-like uh, stinging tree, or the mulberry leaf stinging tree, or rather, more literally, it's the mulberry leaf tree nettle. And it earned this name because the edges of its leaves do happen to greatly resemble those of a mulberry. So, now that I've explained a little bit about this plant's name, it's better to uh, experience the plant itself. So, uh, without further ado. And so, here we are. This is a dendronite that I have been growing for the last couple of years, since the summer of 2018. Uh, it's not that large by the species standards. Uh, this one might be about uh, one meter tall. Uh, the species can grow to uh, about ten meters tall or so in its native habitat. The first things to note about it are leaf arrangement. So this plant has alternate leaves. So we can see it has one leaf here, uh, one leaf here, uh, one here, and this pattern continues in a sort of spiral down the plant. Uh, the leaf attachment is noticeably peltate. So this uh, purple spot in the center of the leaf here, that is where the petiole attaches on the other side. So if I were to lift this up, you can see the petiole attaches into the leaf margin instead, or into the leaf blade rather than on the margin, which is the how it is defined as peltate. Uh, the leaves are somewhat shiny, a little bit dark green. They are they tend to be an understory plant in their native habitat, so they are darker to catch more sunlight usually, since, of course, sunlight is somewhat difficult to come by for them, due to all the other plants that shade them. Uh, there is some slight purple pigmentation down the veins of the plant, uh, in the summer, this becomes much more apparent, and you can see purple uh, all through here, including on the bottoms of the leaf. However, now that it's back indoors, uh, that's not so visible anymore. Since it doesn't have as much light, um, if, you, if I were to zoom way in, see um, 
some sort of substance that the plant secretes. I don't actually know what that's for, but my speculation is that this stuff is used to attract insects that can help protect the plant from things that would attempt to eat it normally. So, um, whatever Australia has instead of native ladybugs like we have in North America, that is likely what these are to attract. Uh, moving to the edge of the leaf, uh, you can see that the leaf edge is serrated. So we would call this dentate. It has teeth. Not necessarily very large teeth, but they are present. I'm not actually sure the purpose of these. Um, leaf margins tend to be quite variable, and exactly why that is doesn't always have a particularly notable reason behind it. The leaf is highly textured, so in this you can see uh, several leaf bumps. And then, the arguably most uh, widely known fact about this plant is, if I zoom away and get dangerously close to it, Uh, that's a good view of it. Uh, you can see that the leaves are somewhat covered in hair. They're quite fluffy looking. Now, despite the appearance of this, the plant is not soft. These are made out of a glass sort of substance, and if something Or to uh, say, try to tear this leaf off, uh, or even indeed to touch it too much, these hairs would rip, and, or they would break into the skin, and then they would snap off, exposing a sharp, glassy um, end that is absolutely filled with a very unfortunate uh, chemical compound. There are several chemicals that um, they tend to cause considerable pain in most animals that are to be afflicted by them. Although that being said, there are some herbivorous species in Australia that are capable of eating this plant. And in North America, um, animals like uh, slugs and snails don't particularly seem to be discouraged. Though fortunately, um, large animals such as the deer, uh, squirrels, and them, uh, they do leave it alone. I've never seen any sort of large damage on it. Um, there have been several stories uh, told about this plant and its uh, stinging capacity, although I don't think there's any merit to most of them. Uh, for example, there's a rumor that uh, some Australian, uh, perhaps it was a soldier, uh, used one as toilet paper and uh, promptly shot himself due to the pain. Although, in all likelihood, as soon as he attempted to grab this leaf and tear it, he would have realized his mistake. And um, even then, it's not actually that bad. Uh, the pain does last for several hours. Uh, seven or eight usually, and it hurts far more than just where you get stung. However, it is bearable. Uh, I don't think it would be worth, uh, you know, actually making death over. And uh, once again, this has uh, spawned quite a few people being nervous about this plant beyond what I think is reasonable. It doesn't have the capacity to chase you down, uh, it's just trying to live in the woods by itself, and 
if they're left well enough alone, they uh, would be very appreciative of that. So, there does seem to be some sort of disconnect between the top of the leaf and the underside of the leaf. The underside appears to sting far more strong than the top does. Um, there have been occasions where I've uh, handled this part of the leaf without any sort of protective equipment and not actually uh, been stung in the slightest. I'll show you that in a few minutes. Uh, whereas, if you touch the bottom of the leaf, uh, you are in for it. It is not a pleasant experience. And then the very, very margins of these leaves here, they don't have enough hairs on the very edge to cause a much problem. Uh, when I was moving this plant into position to record this video, uh, the edge of one of its leaves struck me in the face, or right above the eye, and I feel more or less completely fine. It's slightly irritating, yes, but uh, not enough to actually cause me any problems. Um, regarding this plant's leaf size, uh, this one tends to be rather small, uh, so is this one's leaf isn't that large, although it is a good bit larger than a human hand. But, uh, the real uh, thing about this is that they get very large out in the sun. So, these leaves are winter leaves, where the plant doesn't have very much energy to work with, and the result of this is naturally smaller leaves. Uh, almost every species of plant will do this um, if it's sun-starved. In the summer, I can see leaves about twice as, uh, as big as this personally. So, the, this plant's preferred growing conditions appear to be with well-draining soil, in partial sunlight, and with high levels of humidity. So, in the uh, northeastern North American summer, they grow very quickly and can reach large sizes, and then in the winter, it becomes a race against animals like mealybugs and spider mites in an attempt to keep them from being killed off. So, moving on from the leaves, we can now talk about this plant's flowers. Once again, this is uh, past its preferred growing season, but you can see the last remnants of an inflorescence. So, this species is monaceous. There are male and female flowers present. The white sticks you see on the bulbs are female flowers, and the male flowers are not visible. They're far too small, and even with a microscope, I cannot find them. So, once again, this plant has male and female flowers separately, so it's monoecious. Uh, the inflorescences are opposite, paired two at the base of a leaf, and you can see they branch in an opposite fashion. This is distinct from the alternate leaf arrangement. And it's not very ornate because this species is wind-pollinated. So, when you catch it on a properly sunny day, you can see slight uh, puffs of pollen. You know, just for a few seconds at a time, a good five to ten times per inflorescence. Moving down from the inflorescence, you can see the infructescents. Now, these ones, they do have a visible sign of there being two uh, per leaf node. So there's two here, um, there's two here, and there's, uh, this one mostly snapped off, but there were two there too. 
So now we can talk a little bit about this plant's fruit. Now, the mere fact that it has these uh, bright pink berries is anomalous. Uh, the nettle family fruits are almost always... And they tend to be small, bland, and uh, cracking open and to disperse their seeds. So this one, which relies on birds to disperse its seeds, uh, that is extremely weird. Most of the metal family, once again, is uh, wind dispersed or simply drops to the ground. Now, despite uh, this plant having bright colors to attract animals, it hasn't quite figured out the um, flavor profile just yet. The fruits, to put it lightly, don't really taste the way you'd expect an animal dispersed fruit to taste. They're not sweet. Uh, I don't really know how to put it delicately properly, but uh, they taste like stale sh um, sadness and are generally quite bland. It's a bit like, um, it's like if broccoli had even less flavor to it. Just a very slight bitterness that it was once green, and then very little. So, fortunately, we have that one fruit, or in fructescence is the term for a inflorescence gone to seed, that snapped off. So if I do this carefully enough to um, avoid getting stung to the gloves, which can indeed happen, I should be able... there we go. Uh, to pick one. Now, there is some slight... Uh, weirdness with these fruit, because the part that looks like a fruit, the pink part, is actually accessory tissue. It's modified stem. Uh, the fruit itself is contained within these uh, pink shells. Perhaps if I turn it over, you can see slightly the little um, brown spot, the little thing right where my thumb is. That is the actual fruit. Yeah, the shell is quite hard, so is the seed inside, and it generally appears no different than a seed. Uh, this is called an akeen, and is the same sort of fruit structure that you see in uh, plants like strawberries and dandelions and other things like that. So now that there has been a brief introduction to the uh, family Urticaceae, which is the nettle, which is the nettle family. Uh, every family is named after a genus, so Urtica, the nettle genus, gives its name to the family, Urticaceae. Um, now, I will prove that the tops of the leaves, in some cases, if you absolutely know what you're doing, it's like I do, do not try this at home, if you happen to come across one of these plants, leave it alone, but I will show you that I, personally, know how to touch it. So, now my left hand does not have any sort of glove on it, and you can see that I am pushing the leaf down with my ungloved hand. And what do you know, I haven't collapsed on the floor screaming in pain yet. In fact, it feels a little... Well, it's kind of like Velcro, actually. Slightly bumpy, um, not too sharp. But, if I were to reach past the edge of the leaf and touch the bottom, it would be very bad. If I were to grab the leaf and try to pull it off, also very bad. 
and if I were to push the leaf down so hard the petiole snaps, once again that would be extremely bad. So, I hope you found this video informative, and I hope that I ease some fears some people might have about this species. Uh, once again, it's not out to get you, it's just trying to live its life the same way as everything else. And by being afraid of them, it makes conservation efforts rather difficult, because people just do not see the reason to care about them. Plenty of plants that are fascinating are also dangerous, and coexisting with them by understanding is extremely important. So now I will leave you to return to whatever you are doing, and I am going to put this plant back in its uh, resting area, as well as uh, pick all the berries and see if I can get good seeds out of them. Thank you, and have a good day.